Hello everyone, welcome to Environment and Ecology series with Dr. Vivek Rana. Hope you are doing well. Topic for today's discussion is Chapter 6 of Economic Survey 2022, Sustainable Development and Climate Change. Just as our constitution has some fundamental duties for citizens, in similar way we can say there are aspirant duties which include following economic survey year after year in case you are giving multiple attempts. So this year the task is cut short instead of two bulky volumes there is single volume which has you can say specific chapters on various themes just like the last year. So from environment and the ecology perspective there is only one chapter which has to be prepared qualitatively and it's a lot better if we compare it to the last five year trend of economic surveys. It has specific data which are quite relevant from prelims point of view not so from mains angle we can say that. Now uh, why this uh, you need to go through this chapter because this year the prelims is scheduled on June 5 which happens to be World Environment Day and you can expect a few tricky questions from current perspective on that day itself. So at least we should make an honest attempt to prepare the things which at least the government of India wants us to focus on. So if you, I will be highlighting 10 specific themes which can be asked or you should at least say are being clearly highlighted in this year's economic survey. So without wasting any time, let's just focus on those 10 themes. The first theme, when you start reading this 38 page chapter, you will see initial pages dedicated to Sustainable Development India Index, which brought, is brought by Niti Ayok. So uh, we all know there are 17 SDGs which countries you would follow, but from environment perspective, you should at least focus on some specific goals which are directly or indirectly related to the environment say the goal SDG goal number you could say 6 and 7 they are related to clean energy and then 13 to 15 they are specifically related to environment which are the, the relevant themes of their day and India has done remarkably well it has shined in 8 of those indicators so far as per the report and the report also highlights the top performing states in case you are in following current affairs it should not come as a surprise Kerala, Tamil Nadu and Himachal Pradesh and the success story of Himachal Pradesh is quite uh, you could say relevant because despite the all environmental challenges it has maintained the trend of sustainable development which is quite laudable. In case of UTs it's the Chandigarh, the city beautiful and most of you who are watching this video can relate to it because this is where we can say the sustainable development has been followed in letter and spirit for not just for a year but from you could say when since it has been created. So uh, it, apart from this theme make sure you just go through the history how sustainable development goals came into being what are the summits involved because it's not to entail in the economic survey document. Now the theme too is once again the most important one it deals with the land forest. Now uh, recently we have seen the forest survey report was released by forest survey of India 2021 report was out. It's a biennial report so it will stay relevant not only for 2022 but till 2023 when the new report comes. And uh, more or less the data is same. Uh, India has currently now 24.62% of its geographical area under forests. If we calculate from global perspective, it roughly translates to 2% of global uh, forest and India happens to be top 10 countries which have the forest area under, you could say geographical area under forest. And the interesting thing about this report, uh, you could say economic surveys, they highlighted at least 4 countries where almost more than 50% of the area is under forest. There are no surprises, there is Brazil, the lungs of forest, Amazon is there then we have Peru, Congo and Russia. So make sure just statistical facts which are mentioned in survey are on your tips because these are the themes from which the question uh, can be framed. And then there are conventional themes like which are the top three states which have area under forest which is a static data which is also highlighted in forest survey report Madhya Pradesh, Arunachal 
and then we have the another category of total percentage of geographical area under forest in that case you have to be little uh, cautious because it's not madhya pradesh it happens to be mizoram and arunachal pradesh and other northeastern states yeah. so while preparing for this topic make sure you are clear with the specific term what is tree cover what is forest cover Now, what is forest area? There appear we highlighted few definitions as well that any area more than one hectare, which is covered with canopy of tree density of more than ten percent, is considered a forest. So make sure uh, you also go through the classification of forest. What are very dense forests, dense forests, and what is the scrub vegetation? So make sure these basic terms are clear because a question might not be on the top performers. Uh, they might just ask you the basic concept because UPSC. it demands conceptual clarity more than the mugging up of the facts then the third theme is once again and quite important one it deals with the plastic waste management because india has set an ambitious target of phasing out single use plastics by 2022 now uh, the specific legislations which are playing the role the concept of extended producer responsibility that has been clearly highlighted and it was question was asked in upsc as well, a few years back that uh, what were the like it was introduced in the e waste management now it has been uh, even involved extended to the plastic waste management so make sure the specific facts that what are the new rules because we are now set the bar high now the thickness which is currently permitted in the last year was 75 microns which will be further increased by end of this year 2022 to 120 microns so if examiner wants to test your factual knowledge even these basic details which are clearly mentioned uh, you should be marked up so to be on safer side so then uh, after the plastic waste management the fourth theme they have focused is on rivers because we know that environment is incomplete without the water theme and there are no surprises there is reference to the national river of india which is the ganga river and for its conservation the the flagship program of namami gange is highlighted so there is nothing much new in it they have highlighted the role of clean ganga fund the organizations involved the the journey how it all started and the four pillars uh, Uh, on which the the program is revolving are high highlighted so make sure to just go through it what are those basic pillars like nirmal ganga what is the concept of jan ganga so these basic terminologies uh, have to be marked up aviral ganga so these are the specific themes then the next theme you know, after the uh, rivers they are focused on you could say the air pollution now in air pollution once again they have highlighted the achievements which uh, or you could say the uh, the initiatives which we are trying to achieve through the various adaptation which are more or less on which are covered in our class lecture but make sure you just go through them the switch from bharat stage 4 to 6 for automobile standards the we could say ethanol bl blending target which uh, we are targeting at almost 20% by you could say the 2030 theme and we are going in the right direction and apart from that the target set by you could say the air quality index the ncap programs and the uh, comparison with the air quality of the ncr region so even though you don't have to mug up the factual details but all of these initiatives can be asked what exactly is the air quality index what are the pollutants covered what are the categories how the cities are ranked so because this is part of administration as well so they expect a basic awareness from your side so this is more or less on conventional lines uh, and there might be one or two themes uh, which uh, you might feel are not been covered then this was the first five themes the next uh, theme you can say uh, is more or less uh, on conventional line because if you have gone through the last year economic survey the 2021 edition the entire environment chapter was focusing on national action plan on climate change and there were few bus, uh, links which were associated with the climate change summits so it is almost the reputation in case you have prepared already that chapter you have the summary of it you could just integrate because they have given that same table in which the eight missions the green india mission national water mission sustainable eco himalayan ecosystem Uh, you could say the sustainable agriculture theme or strategic knowledge on climate change so those all eight missions their goals and objectives and then how they are progressing 
okay, so there are three table so make sure uh, you focus on the first two themes uh, what are the eight missions what are the objectives and the guidelines and then you try to integrate one more theme that under which ministry they fall because if a preliminary question is being asked they might interchange the ministries you know, because sometimes we take it for granted that this topic has been covered in environment so maybe the environment ministry is involved but each for each program there is separate different ministry like in solar mission it is ministry of new and renewable energy you know. for green india there is ministry of environment and forest you know. Also, science and tech is involved in a couple of others. So make sure you just prepare a table and just mug it up to be on simple side. So apart from this uh, sixth theme, which uh, question uh, can be expected, the seventh theme we can say is more or less related to the major initiatives and achievement. Now, this is once again an important part because India is trying to emerge as a climate uh, leader and it is taking some bold initiatives. So if you have followed the last year budget, there was a specific reference to the hydrogen mission. Even though they have not focused on what were the challenges or what likely are to be the advantages of using green hydrogen as fuel and what are the different types of hydrogen. So make sure this theme has been in news so you can expect a question on mains as well as in prelims aspects. So they have glorified initially the national hydrogen mission launch. And then the Indian Railways has set its own ambitious target of net zero carbon emissions by 2030. So they have a proper roadmap, they will be totally switching to, you could say, electric uh, trains as well as the other roadmaps where they are reducing dependence on fossil fuels. So that's a quite an ambitious one. And ethanol blending target has once again been highlighted in this section as well. So you can say that it's you can say ethanol blending is one of the key priority areas for government which it is trying to push with already in that direction but the target it remains to be seen whether it would be accomplished by the given deadline of 2025 yeah. and then the question has already been asked in certain examination about pm kusum scheme in which we are promoting the solar pumps to make uh, agriculture sustainable and to save electricity so this once again highlighted so make sure you are clear with the pm kusum scheme as well now the eighth theme is the conventional theme in which they have highlighted once again the, the commitments which were made in the Paris Agreement because we know the Paris Agreement is going to be the, uh, the main environmental uh, treaty which will be governing the actions till 2030 and then we might have some another treaty. So the, all the targets which were set in that summit, reducing emission intensity by 30 to 35 percent, you know, switching to renewable energy or making almost 40 percent of the energy to clean sources are once again given. But make sure you are just not carried away with that thing because the next thing is more important. It's the COP26 at Glasgow because at 2020 we had seen due to COVID there was no summit. Finally, Glasgow, UK held COP26 and India once again rose to the occasion and set some really ambitious targets. So the problem with the document in this particular section is they have not specifically highlighted what are the enhanced climate targets which India has set for itself. I already have a video separate because this year if you will go through the mains which were just held in January month, there was a question that you have to give the details of enhanced uh, Indian targets. So make sure you are not just mugging up the Paris uh, targets, the enhanced targets of renewable energy, of reducing emission intensity, NDCs which have been upscaled, they need to be updated. So make sure you update them and uh, add to this uh, section because uh, this section more or less uh, probably uh, due to limited availability uh, they have not given the specific details uh, in that particular section. So this particular section is not too you could say uh, qualitative so you have to add few specific from it. And the final theme uh, is nevertheless is the India's initiatives at international level because India once again has highlighted is trying to be a major player in environmental economics and it's emerging as a leader as well. There are quite initiatives which are led by India. So the, on the top of the list is India International Solar Alliance. We all know that the Green Grid Initiative which is happens to be coined as OSOVA one sum, one word, one grid. So there is once again mention of it. And this year main question, the one question was or once again on this green grid initiative itself. So these are the themes which are clearly identified if you are following government documents, they should not come as a surprise for you. So apart from ISA, the another theme which is a totally new is the 
life initiative now they might ask what this life initiative is or is related to so this is related to lifestyle of environment so this is promoting sustainable lifestyle and uh, this is the one once again the really stand out theme because if you read the summary of the chapter which is given on page 1 they have once again highlighted this life acronym so make sure you are clear what the life acronym means what is oso work what is isa isa more or less you are all thorough with and then the another initiative they, which uh, india is leading is cdri coalition for disaster resilient you could say infrastructure because in cop26 also we had seen the emergence of iris framework the iris stands for once again infrastructure for resilient island states where they are specifically focusing on small you could say industrial developing island states which are properly clubbed as sids which we stand for small island developing states so uh, this is once again a scheme which is uh, growing day by day there are already as, as per survey 28 countries which have part of this initiative and more are likely to join soon and the final theme which they have highlighted is the lead it group now the lead it stand for leadership group for industry transition because we all know the renewable energy is the future and more or more we have to switch to those transition so the lead it group once again deals with the renewable energy and switch to cleaner alternatives so overall we can say that if we focus our preparation from current perspective to these 10 qualitative themes we will definitely get some dividend or other and hopefully we can expect a few questions from this side so make sure you go through this document if you have sufficient time there are 38 pages you should make an effort if you are for falling short of time you have other plans uh, and you cannot devote as much time to read each uh, chapter so i have prepared this summary which uh, is just of 8 pages i will upload it in couple of days in the state civil service mentorship group so you can make use of it and if you are facing any problem related to civil service preparation you can feel free to connect so i hope this session was useful in some way in giving you why economics reading this particular chapter is important for this year's prelims or you got some a quick revision of the topics which uh, are mentioned in economic survey which will push you a little harder to read them okay so thank you very much have a nice day